Here we are, and I am going to make sure that you are six feet away or more. And if you're not, I'll spray you. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious, this has gone nuts. All right, so I couldn't find a bigger one. This is not as good. I need one to stretch out and put a perimeter all around me, right? I am glad this insanity is starting to wane, but not enough and not quick enough. So, are you ready? Let's get started. So I wanted to catch up on a number of things. One is we are officially open. I'm gonna have to adjust to that. We're also probably gonna have to clean up, you know. Uh, unlock doors, put some WD-40 on so that they'll open, clean up all the cobwebs and run all the uh, critters out that have been taking over. So just want to let you know we're receiving appointments and happily available to serve you as we've done in the past, if not better, through this learning process. And you say, why are you looking at notes? Because you know what, if you give me a day, just invite. Turn it on and let's talk, we can go for it. You give me a week, we can really do it. I don't need no preparation, no notice whatsoever. You give me 30 minutes, I need some preparation. I don't need some notes to hold it down to 30 minutes. So you know what my preparation today was? Sorry, but you know, there's a few things going on. I <laughs> had about 30 minutes. So we're going to do this. Also, we have lecture videos that should be posted within a week. So I told you before that we found some videos, and that's great. And I am going through the process of learning how to get those online for you. So I hope to do that soon. I did run across one that will not go on because I was speaking too much truth that, you know, I always speak the truth, but I was speaking the truth that rubs the powers that be the wrong way. So I am not one that likes to smile and go up and say, hey, could I be next and putting my neck in the noose and just, you know, do me in because the guys with big sledgehammers are running around all over the place. So there is one, uh, I hope you attended that one, and I would like to attend more and give you, you know, provide more and give you more updates even up to today, but I can't have those recorded and put online it would be not smart of me. Other people are doing it, and other people are getting slammed, and sometimes in very serious ways. So, I also wanted to say, and yes, Davey, I hope you're there if you're tuned in. Davey is a guy who asked me about EMFs in a previous lecture in relation to batteries a few lectures ago. Or was that yesterday? Or was that last lecture? Uh, Oh well, it seems to all run together these days. You know what I mean? Uh, is that happening to you? Is this a weekday or is this a weekend? All right, so uh, I've got a lot of partially used nine volt batteries, Davey, if you're interested. Here's an example, because it takes a lot of batteries to do these things. And so I checked them with the meter and they're still good. But the thing is, they're not good enough for these lavalier mics. So they have to be tip-top batteries. You know, after um, two or three hours and you start seeing the little blinking red light, it's time to change it. Okay, so oh yes, let's have a little news today. You want some news today before we get started? And we got some serious nuggets for you, very serious nuggets. This is something out of the advanced book. What's it called? Regeneration sequence. But you're going to learn more about it. Okay? So, news today, the White House rejects CDC's coronavirus reopening plan. Hallelujah. It was blocked from publication after the Trump administration officials labeled them overly prescriptive. I'll use another word. Ridiculous and keeps perpetuating the same thing as the world shut down that science, okay, science, not opinion, science, medical science, researchers, statisticians, virologists, and all the ones that are not 
politically associated or associated with power and money with something to gain or lose, but want to give you the truth and the facts because that's their heart, their motivation. So the science speaks for itself, if you want to listen to that. And you know already, you are not going to get the truth out of any main media. So the meaning was what they proposed was a joke, and I'm glad he kicked that back. I'm glad that some people are finally pushing back on this. Well, what would you say, uh, untrustworthy or maybe not living in the real world representatives that have done nothing but gain from this smoke and mirrors game that has been the most effective game in history affecting globally? Or those that have for decades have track records proving that they are not people, they're not for the people, they're not for the country, they're for themselves, and a twisted one world population control agenda. Oh, did I say that? No, no, what we're just gonna say is the officials. The officials have said, and that has been pushed back and kicked back. So we'll just call them the officials. People too often forget we have rights in this country and we can keep them if we stand up for them unitedly, unitedly. When we don't, they'll be gone in a flash because for a long time, people have been trying to do away with our Constitution and what has made this country so great, unlike any country in the world or that has ever been. And that speaks by how long our Constitution has stood, longer than any country in history. We don't want to lose that. I've got one more tip and then some, I got, you want confession time? Okay, I'm gonna do a confession time and we're gonna talk about a couple of other things and we're gonna get the TKM. But here's the last tip on the news. Okay, this is uh, what I heard yesterday from two different doctors, well-respected, well-known, and another source. So this is what I've been hearing in the media and on YouTubes from very respected sources, from insiders. We know that people have been getting paid, hospitals, doctors, mostly hospitals and different ones, for upping the COVID-19 COVID death rate. And we know by the team, the COVID team, that they said from the very beginning, I'm just gonna recap here for a second. And this is what, but let me recap and then I'll explain. So the recap is they have said on national news and on the networks over and over and over, we are going to count anyone that dies in the United States, whether they had any other disease, any other problems, whether it was kidney failure, heart attack, stroke, whatever, if they had the COVID virus, we're going to count that as a COVID death. Got it? So that skews the numbers. Let me add another one. There's been many, many reports from many sources that people are being called a COVID death that had nothing to do with a virus, in fact, didn't even have a virus of any type. Not the flu, not a common cold, nothing. Well, why? There's been rumors of payoffs. Okay, now, direct from the horse's mouth, and no, I'm not gonna name names, is that there was a man recently that died, went in with cardiac problems into the hospital, and he died of cardiac arrest, okay? And the family wanted to know why on the certificate was listed as a COVID death because he didn't have a virus, he didn't have COVID or anything else. <laughs> so they were a friend of another doctor that, I'll just summarize it, what they found out is that there's $13,000 you get for every COVID death that goes down for the hospital, $13,000. So you mark it down as a COVID death, hospital gets $13,000 from this stuff that's going on out here. That's unheard of. That didn't happen before, it's happening now because it pushes the agenda. So the statisticians, the independent people, worldwide and in this country, the ones that are not politically or power or money controlled, the oversight groups that are not tied in for other purposes, what they're saying historically, we're never going to truly know what the accurate numbers for COVID-19 deaths are. Not even a general ballpark. They have been skewed so much. All we know for a fact by all the evidence that's been presented is that it's far, far less than the official numbers. But we'll never truly know because nobody's taking an accurate count. So, news for today. So, 
Now that I've gently presented the latest news, let's talk about where I have deeply fallen in these times of voluntary incarceration. So, so put on my shame hat. So in my shame hat, I will confess, and let's get down to it. Yes, I found temporarily that I really like ice cream, okay? Just good old vanilla ice cream. And yes, we get it from the natural stores and stuff. And I like those ice cream sandwiches too. You know, one of them and two. Yes, I like them. More than any other time in my life, even way back before I did natural stuff and changing the diet and knew all of what was going on and what it does to you. And I loved ice cream. No, this, this is different. I like it more. Must have something to do with incarceration. I must confess that I also have fallen way down to seriously indulging, and may I say, BLTC. You know, BLT with cheese. That's BLTC. Everybody talks about BLT, bacon, lettuce, tomato, but we're talking BLTC. That's a whole new twist. So while I'm confessing, let me explain. I've, I've got to explain how I got into this. It's not all my fault. Let me explain the details. It started with honey wheat bread. Now, I understand about gluten and the gluten king of wheat and all that. But then it led to lean, crisp bacon cooked in the oven so it was equally cooked. And this is not the packaged stuff. This is down the street from the, uh, I see, I can't say S-P-R-O-U-T-S, -S, right? Or, or any other market like that. But they had the meat cutters wrapped of the good lean bacon. And that's what we use. You know, no nitrates, none of those additives, none of those things. And then you add natural mayonnaise on both sides of the bread. And then there was the deli sliced white American cheese. I know, I know, bear with me. I looked over and saw large leaves of cleaned romaine lettuce. So I decided right then and there, if you're going to do it, do it right. So let me explain what happened. I warmed the bread in the toaster oven, not toasted all the way because I don't, I don't like that. Then spread the mayonnaise on both sides of the bread, not just one single, both sides, so that you put it together so it's not so dry, nice and moist. Applied the white American cheese, yes, to both sides. That means two slices. Then the thick cut, ripe, juicy red tomatoes. You know, what are those? Uh, Roman tomatoes, romaine, what, whatever those tomatoes are, they're funny shape and they're soft and they're beautiful even before you do anything. And you know, the way I like them is when you cut into it and you look at it and it's all red. It still has some firmness. It's not mush, but it's all red. It's not a little green. It's not a little whitish in the center and it's there. So yes, cut those kind of thicker slices and place them strategically on the bread. Then two layers, two layers of wonderful lean crisp bacon. And then the lettuce crisscrossed. I picked it up with both hands and took a bite and that was it. I'm, I'm sorry. I was chewing and I realized I was hooked. It was so good. It was, it was beyond the ice cream. It was so good. So here's my confession and my apologies. I'll, I'll, change from that. I'll, I'll try. I'll do my best. I need your help. You just had to have been there to understand. That's all I can say. You might not like bacon. You might want to do bacon. And you've heard me teach about bacon, but you just had to have been there. But I want you to know something else before we move on. That I have done my share, okay? I've done my share of holding up my weight in, this, in these times. So I want you to know I've held up my weight. I don't know how you've done, but I've held up mine. So what we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to forget about that. I've confessed it. We're all done. And what I'm going to reveal is that in this book that you've heard me mention a number of times, which is called, this is thicker because we did this. Look at that thing. It is thick pages. That's almost a weapon. Wow. Against all the bad guys. All right. So... And this is the only place other than the advanced book, which you can't find online, you can't purchase it, 
there's a lot of hoops and everything else to jump through before you could begin to think about attending a advanced class. Is it needed? No. Is it required? No. Do you even need that for? No. So in the back of this book, the last sequence, not the last page, but the last application in the book is the regeneration sequence. And that's what I want to share and talk about today because it is so special. Well, think of the name, regeneration. So there it is. You've got one page to show the left sequence and another page to show the right sequence. And no, there's not an illustration there. So you already know enough to do this. But let me go through a couple of these things. I have it up here for you. If you don't have one of these, boom, there it is. Copy the board. And I want to go through this. Why? Why am I doing this? Because the regeneration sequence, the regeneration sequence is to regenerate. Regenerate what? Yes. There's generative energy and there's regenerative energy. This is a fourth stratum application. It is a powerful fourth stratum application. So here's my thinking. What did I do by putting this in here? I revealed something. So that process, I'm going to confess again. So that process was, if I'm going to take something, a, a really valuable nugget out of the advanced book, and I'm going to share that in another place accessible to anybody, then what would that be? That's going to be the regeneration sequence because it's so encompassing and so profound. Now, I will say there's not everything involved in the advanced book. Remember, we've got five stratums that relate to 144,000 functions, unevenly divided up in energy spheres. It's evenly divided up with organ energy and, and some other things, but altogether 144,000 functions. It's not evenly divided up. And remember that, think of the emotional relation and the other things related to what makes fourth stratum so unique. So fourth stratum only has one energy sphere, and that's the number 23. Do we have that in here? Yes. It starts with the 23 and goes to the 23 again. Now, one energy sphere, when the others, there's 26 energy spheres. And I explained before about the variations of energy spheres in the other lecture are not really energy spheres. For simplification, we call them that, like energy sphere high 1, energy sphere high 19. They're not really energy spheres and don't function like energy spheres. Their purpose is for circulation and energy pathways. So if you miss that, <laughs> that's to let you know you should be attending these lectures. There's lots of nuggets. Even if there's other things that you know you may snore on, there's lots of serious nuggets here that hasn't hasn't been taught in many classes or hasn't been taught in any classes so far. I'm digging out some things to make these special. So the advanced book, the majority of everything in the advanced book is actually focused and related to fourth stratum because there is more death as a result of dysfunctioning fourth stratum, not than any other, does this sound familiar? But then all of the others put together, there's more death through fear, through lack. What did you say? Fear. There's more death through fear. Or could we say more death through fear than COVID? More death through fear than, yes, yes we could. Okay, so that's what the advanced book is about. Now what's written up here is the left sequence and what do you do? You sit on the left side. So what do we do for the right sequence? You reverse all of this. You know how to do that. If you don't know how to do that, it means you haven't had a class and you need to take a class. Otherwise, here it is. I hope that you're able to see these things. Let me right. check. You can't see the coccyx down here, but here's this. There's a coccyx here, so we're good. Now. This is not exactly the one, two, three, and you're done. This is 12 steps. It's not just 12 steps because look at the eighth step. You're doing a plumb line. What? Through the sacrum? 
No, not just through the sacrum. You're doing a plumb line through both sides of the sacrum. There's a lot involved here. What about step four? All toes, each toe. Little toe to big toe, one at a time. Little toe to big toe, not big toe to little toe. There's an order. And remember, the inside base of that little toe is where kidney and bladder energy of fourth stratum meet. Very important. So it's starting with that. So a unique thing that this does, besides work all fourth stratum projects and work with all regeneration of energy in the body, which is very, very important, and working with the number one cause of death from a TKM energetic perspective, we're going to carry on. So let me go through this quickly. We got step one. There's place for both hands. Simple, 23 and 8. Then you're going to the 16, then the 24, then on step four, like I said, each toe, little toe to big toe on the right side. Then you're going to the 26. By the way, after this, I've got some other special nuggets. So I may run through them because time is short, but hang on. So then you're going to the 26 and then 23 and then the 24. Well, you did that up here. It's very important. This is the right 24 and then the left 24, even though you're doing both left 23s again. There's a reason for that. Follow through. There's a kidney correlation to that. And then you're going to step eight, and that's going to the sacrum. How do you do that? You're doing a plumb line bottom to top. So what order? Bottom to top. You do left side bottom to top, and then you do right side, bottom to top, all in this one step. So what that is, I've got this out here for you, that if you could bend down just a little bit, okay. So I think y'all can see this. So here is the sacrum, or at least this thing shaped like this is supposed to be a sacrum. We have the lumbar, and here's the thoracic. So thoracic, lumbar, sacrum, and right down here that you can't see because you are in the way, but you're heavy. Okay, so the coccyx is there. What we're doing is, since this is the back, this is the right side and this is the left side. So in that step eight, we're going from bottom to top, that solid line, all the way through the edge of the sacrum, the edge. Make sure you get all of it. Plumb line means solid line, so if you want to do two or three fingers, because it's hard to get that little one in there. So at least mine is little. So what you do is you're touching the edge and don't have gaps. You want it together. You don't want to leave a gap, hence the word plumb line. Solid line through the edge of the sacrum, very, very important. That's one of the key factors in this whole sequence. There's another one, but that's a key factor. You've got to get this circulating properly. What's there? All five strata are there. So that's helping all five strata in this bridge that we talked about in TKM. Once you do this side, you get to the top, then you go back to the tip of it. And if you want to add, you want to be more thorough, the reason I put this here on the other side of the microscope, what? Put what here? The coccyx is you can include the coccyx as well for a much more thorough effect. Because if you have a problem with this area, it usually means that there was a coccyx problem. So you want to include that. Even though it's not standard in the procedure, it's going right to working with the priorities. But let's make it more encompassing. I mean, come on. You know, you got about this much of a coccyx. So plumb line the coccyx and sacrum from bottom to top and after you do it, then do the right side from bottom to top. And after you've completed that, then you can move on. Unless, let's say you have a real chronic blood pressure issue, you have calcification of the coccyx, or if you can't tell, then you know that you have calcification and change of shape in the sacrum, and you're having problems and things related to it in the spine and other things that you learn, then I would come back after I do left side, bottom to top, right side, bottom to top, and then I would go up the center. Tip of the coccyx, up through the coccyx, up through the sacrum. Wow! Now that's seriously encompassing. You've got to get this open. This is primary. Primary. 
the bridge. And then you move to the pubic symphysis. What is that? Top center of the spinous, no, top center of the pubic bone. Right dead center, top center of the pubic bone. Then you go on step 10 to the T11. T11 is right here. So here's a divide between the thoracic and the lumbar. These are a little bit larger. There's five of them. And you're going to T11, right on the center of the spinous process, the little bony part sticking up in everybody's spine, except for the ones that are covered a little bit more. And then you go from there. We're picking up to step 11 is up here. That same hand, excuse me, the right hand goes to the T-tail, and then the left hand goes to L1. L1 is right there. First lumbar. They're numbered from top to down. And then after that, it goes to number two. And that's it. And you're done. And it's awesome. And you need to repeat that as often as possible for all critical very chronic that would justify in anything that's chronic related to fourth stratum, and you can expound on that. So I did mention things about calcification in the area, blood pressure issues, spinal issues, and anything you need to work with, with the bridges and such. Let me give you a couple of other nuggets. These are good. Ready? You want to know a special thing to do for your armpit. No, not really. Okay, you want to know for glaucoma and for cataracts. So back of the wrist, holding the back of the wrist, you put your thumb on the palm side, holding the back of the wrist helps cataracts and glaucoma as a single step. But I'm going to give you more. Now let's break this down. If you put your hand in the center of the armpit, not the 26. The center of the armpit, that is a third stratum relation. That governs eyes. It relates to the opposite eye directly. The center of the armpit. Sometimes if a person you can feel one, two, or especially three knots there, then you really, really need help. Or tenderness. How about two ticklish? That's tension. So center of the armpit. So you could, if you're doing this on somebody else and you want to stick your hand in the center of their armpits, you can hold the back of the wrist and center of the armpit. That's going to help the opposite eye. It's going to help glaucoma and cataracts. So let me give you another one. The armpit is directly related to glaucoma. Cataracts are because of undigested dead protein. That can be taken care of a number of different ways. One of the simple things you want to do is you could take, non-TKM, you could take more enzymes, especially protease, digest, different things like that. But you need to work on the systems, if you've got that, that also help your body produce these enzymes, like spleen, like stomach, different things that work with your digestion so that it can help. But let me give you a TKM step for this. So if you're holding center of the armpit and opposite 21, excuse me, 20. That is my 20. 21? Oh, I've been self-incarcerated too long. All right, so we got 20 and then 21. Now, you've heard me talk about this with other things, but center of the armpit, you're in 20 and then 21. Now, that's for that eye. It's the same side that you're working for that eye. That will also help. There's interrelations here. One is dealing with protein. One is dealing with pressure. So we want to deal with the dead protein, but we want to deal with the other. And another note here, vision comes from fours, energy sphere sequence four to help the energy sphere four function correctly, and a liver energy. So liver energy sequence to help liver energy. All right, got another one for you. How about light sensitivity? There's a number of people that have a period of time of this or it begins chronic with them. Light sensitivity, the eye is light sensitive. There's a simple step for that. You hold the toe next to the big toe. So if you want to call that your second toe, hold your second toe next to the big toe, 
with the opposite 14 for light sensitivity. Light sensitivity. Got that? I got one more. Actually, two more. I know we're run, we've already run out of time, but so T12, we talked about T11, but T12, the one past T11, and or back of the wrist to give milk for breastfeeding. Now this is a common problem that's actually maybe not talked about that much, but it's out there a lot. So I'm going to couple those together because those are direct relations. So T12 and holding back of the wrist to help milk production, okay? That's a, a big issue that does not need to be an issue because mother's milk is critically essentially important for babies, if at all possible, when that can take place. Another one. You want another one? One more. These have a commonality, right? Center back of the wrist. Center back of the wrist. Helps with motion sickness, morning sickness, and other similar related sicknesses. Back of the wrist. I'm always holding the other side with a thumb. And if the focus is back of the wrist, then I'm usually holding either 26 correlation, center of the palm, or I'm actually going right to the palm side of the wrist. Back of the wrist, palm side of the wrist. So, one announcement. Next Tuesday, we're not doing this at 2 o'clock. We're doing this at 11.30 a.m. And that's probably going to be the last week of doing two of these a week. I love it, I enjoy it, but we're moving on, right? And we're open and moving forward. God bless you, and we will see you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.